Welcome back to Advice for Grad Students. Uh, I'm your host, Phil Hahn. I'm a, a 2010 PhD from the MIT Security Studies program. I, I'm at the US Naval War College. Uh, the views expressed today by our speakers are our own and not that of any institution we're associated with. It's our good fortune to have John Minnick back. Uh, he is a PhD candidate and a pre-doc fellow at George Washington University. John, welcome back to Advi Advice for Grad Students. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. All right, fantastic. Today, today's discussion uh, is on different types of theory. And I've been looking forward to this discussion for a while. So John, why in the world did you pick this topic? Uh, great question. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, the simple answer would be that theory building is, I think, one of the most important and also most fun parts of being a political scientist and international relations scholar. Um, but it's also, unfortunately, I think, something of a dwindling art form in the con contemporary academic discipline. And that's because a lot of the research that you see put out now, I would say, you know, is heavily empirical. Uh, but relatively thinly theoretical. Um, so one thing I would just encourage uh, students at MIT, and I think that actually, you know, if you're at MIT, you're in a really great place because MIT is a department that has a deep legacy of really good theory building. Um, but it's something that I think students should really take seriously and, and you know, think of this also as an important muscle that they want to continue stretching, even as you're working on your methods classes, your research design and things like that, you know, don't forget about the theory building. And the reason I would say that is, you know, on a practical level, my impression is that top journals and top political science departments still really care about innovative theory. You know, I think that this is something that really matters. And part of the reason that this matters is because innovative, ambitious theories are in some ways where the truly lasting contributions uh, to the field come from. You know, these are the things that we remember 20, 30, 40 years later, and we continue to revisit in things like the general examinations process, or you know, when we're developing our own theory and our dissertation, it's often in reference to big, powerful theories from you know, sometimes as many as three or four decades ago. So uh, it's a really, you know, it's an art form that that can easily be forgotten, but really should be at the center of your graduate school and dissertation writing experience. Okay, well, I am totally bought in. So let's talk <laughs> about the topic then. What advice as far as the different types of theories? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I've got one more, you know, I guess, quote unquote, practical piece of advice, which would be okay. that I, th I think in your first two years as a graduate student, it's a good idea to, in a sense, try on a bunch of different theories, you know, explore them, see what jibes with you, and I think as you're doing that, uh, and of course, this will be part of your sort of curricular experience, taking classes like Introduction to International Relations or the Foundations on Security Studies class. Uh, you know, one thing you want to do is think deeply about the assumptions underlying each theory. And also, I think in a way, use a kind of deep engagement with theory to think critically about your own assumptions, the assumptions that you bring to thinking about how international politics uh, or any aspect of political science works. But what I would say is, you know, there really isn't a need at this stage to try to fit yourself into one bucket or another. You don't have to, you know, advertise yourself as a card carrying realist or a constructivist or a liberal theorist. I mean, there are, you know, a lot of different tools, play around with them, see what jibes with you, you know, and follow your instinct. So that's my, you know, in a sense, more practical advice as a first, second year grad student. I guess I do have some thoughts on ways of thinking about groups of theory that maybe are a little bit more abstract, but might help uh, early stage grad students as well. And I guess here I would make five points, but I'll make them quickly. Um, so the first is, you know, I think one thing we can think about there being, you know, different levels of theory. So there are paradigmatic theories, and this is we think about the big debates between realism, and then of course, different schools within realism versus liberalism versus constructivism. There's also what we sometimes call medium range theory. So these are theories that are a little bit more focused on explaining a specific set of empirical variation that may you know, draw from and have implications for the big paradigm theories, but are operating at a somewhat, you know, uh, let's say more targeted level. And then finally, there's sort of micro level theory, which is really 
as I understand it, about teasing out, you know, very precisely the mechanisms that link kind of the big buckets of, you know, independent, independent variables and understanding really specifically how those mechanisms work. So that's one, you know, first thing that I think students should think about as they analyze, as they digest, and as they begin to think about their own theories. Another thing that I think is important, especially when you're thinking about your dissertation project, is what we call DV versus IV driven research. So DV, dependent variable driven research, this is research that says, I'm going to go out there and find some variation in the world. And hopefully that variation is puzzling, meaning we don't really have an explanation for it. And our existing explanations don't do a very good job of explaining it. And I'm going to develop a theory to explain that. Uh, another approach would be what we call IV driven, independent variable uh, driven uh, theory building. And this is basically, you know, I want to take some big change in the international system. So let's say, or, or at any level. So I, we could take, you know, modernization. Economic modernization is the independent variable. And we want to study the effects of modernization on XYZ outcomes. So, I mean, both of these are totally valid approaches. Different people have, you know, have their biases and their preferences. But I think it's good as you begin thinking about your theory to be aware of these differences and see which one also works better for you. Another thing I would just draw people's attention to is actors and interests. It's really important to think about in your story, who are the key actors? And don't try to develop a theory that has five or six different sets of actors that are interacting in these very strategic ways, because it's just going to get way too complicated. So think very carefully, who are the actors you really care about? And then once you've identified those actors, think about their interests. And in a lot of ways, once you've done that, that's going to kind of, you know, give a lot of the motion to your theory building process. Uh, a final issue that I think, actually I have two more. So the fourth issue uh, that I think uh, we all struggle with is how to balance parsimony with what we might call descriptive richness. Um, and, and it really is a balance because we don't want to have too complex theories. We don't want to have theories with seven or eight moving parts that kind of look like big Rube Goldberg machines. You know, and even if those theories explain 95% of the observed variation, if they have seven or eight parts, if I can't put a diagram up on, you know, the screen and have the audience understand it in a minute or less, or ideally 30 seconds, uh, or if I can't explain it to my parents, then it's just not going to be useful as a theory. At the same time, we don't want a theory that's too simple, you know, that has maybe one moving part and explains, let's say, half of the of the variation that we see in the world, you know, but doesn't contain enough meat. So you want to balance those and find a, a good middle ground. And then finally, I think it's just important as you begin the theory building process to always think about how you would test your theory. You know, what would be the observable implications of a particular story that you're putting out in the world? And what would I look for in order to say, okay, this theory doesn't work? Because one thing that we want to avoid is non-falsifiable arguments, arguments that we just, there's no way that we can ultimately prove them wrong. Okay. Well, that last one was going to be a question I was going to ask you. And so that <laughs> took that one away. So I'm going to ask a different type of question that, uh, and that has to do with, in theory building, uh, uh, inductive and or deductive approaches. So yeah. what's your thoughts uh, on both of those type of techniques? Yeah, I mean, I, I, in a way, I kind of liken this to the DVIV. I mean, obviously, they are somewhat different. And I, I think they're both valid approaches. You know, I think that it is good, in a sense, to, you know, begin uh, with I guess what I would say is I don't know that we can, I don't know that either purely inductive or purely deductive theory building is going to get you to where you really want to be. I think it needs to be in a way, a kind of iterative mix between the two, you know, so we're going to begin, maybe we have, you know, some simple premises, you know, I am concerned with the Chinese party state. And I think that the Chinese party state, you know, deductively, I think that the Chinese party state has XYZ priorities, and they're going to pursue them in this order. Uh, and that will lead to certain outcomes. Okay, well, then I go to the evidence and I look and see, does the, does the evidence support, you know, my prediction based on my deductive reasoning? If it doesn't, you know, I then go back and I kind of tweak the process. So, I mean, and this is, you know, in reality, and this is something that I think is, is hard, especially for students to, uh, 
grasp before you've gone through the dissertation writing and of course the book writing process, which I haven't done yet, is that the theory that you see in the published book or the published journal, journal article is totally different from the theory that that author began with. I absolutely guarantee you because the whole process of working on a dissertation is constant tweaking. You know, you begin with some simple premises, you find they kind of work, but they don't kind they don't work in these other ways. You go back to the drawing board and it's this, you know, slow and steady process of accumulating better ideas. And in a way that is the process of knowledge building about the world. So I think it's really important to have both elements. You know, you want to go into looking for evidence with some clear ideas about, you know, who matters, what do they want, you know, and what are the underlying assumptions you bring? Are they rational actors? You know, are there other things that are affecting their behavior? Um, don't be so wedded to your deductive principles that it blinds you to the empirical reality of the world. Yeah, John, I think that's great advice. Uh, I'm, the, I'm the same way. Uh, I start with some puzzle in the world. I look at that puzzle inductively. I try to understand it. Then I start thinking deductively. What is a theory that could explain it? And then you take the other cases and you're constantly tweaking. And there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. That's how it's supposed to work. No. Well, I'll tell Absolutely. you what, this was a fantastic discussion. I know this session is going to be incredibly helpful to generate a bunch of questions. And I'll bet you get tons of questions based upon <laughs> this advice to grad students. Anyway, thank you very wow. much, John, for your advice. Thank you, Phil. Thank you. Thank you. It's really great to be here. And I look forward to those questions.